So this is definitely structural. Structural says, I'm telling you these are the gates that I want you to use, and I want you to design it, implement it using those gates. And you're just straight up saying what gates it's going to be. So every Verilog program starts with the word module, and then you give it, the, give it a name. I'll call it MUX. And you say what your outputs and your inputs are. So here I have X1, X2, S, and my output is F. And then I'll have input, and I'll say which of those are my inputs. X1, X2, S are my inputs. My output is F. And then when I do um, gate level primitives, I just put the name of the gate. And then I can assign, without, without listing these variables elsewhere, I can assign the output of a gate to a variable name. Um, and then I put, I put the name of the gate. So I'll start with my not gate. And then I'll just give a variable name to the output of that uh, not gate. Um, I'll call it K. Okay, so the output of the not gate is K, and I put that first, comma, and then it's input S. Okay, so I did the not gate. All right, now um, I'll do an AND gate. So AND, um, I'll do this bottom AND gate. I'll call the output of that bottom AND gate G. And so I put the output first, G, comma, and then the two inputs, S comma X2 semicolon. Then I will do this top AND gate, so AND. And I'll call that output uh, H. So H comma X1 comma K. So I'm using that intermediate that I have there, K semicolon. And then my last gate is OR. And my output for my OR is F. And my inputs are H and G, semicolon. And then end module. So just listing the gates. Um, and you put the output. The output is the first letter. And it does not have to be defined anywhere. No, those don't matter. The only thing that matters is that the output comes first. Yeah. So you don't have to put like G, H, or F in the, like, define the inputs or outputs? Only for these gate level primitive, primitives. And the next one that we do, which um, does not use gate level primitives, but uses um, the continuous assign statement, you do. Okay? But with gate level primitives, you don't. So you see the outputs go first? Yes. Yeah, kind of weird, but they do. Okay, so next we're going to use the continuous assign statement. So this is not gate level primitives. It acts a lot like it. We're still going to tell it pretty much exactly what we want it to do. Um, the, uh, the computer may not end up doing it exactly the way we say. If we do it like this, then what we're going to get as the schematic is this. Um, but so this one is using the continuous assigned statement. And so this will be module. And you give it a name. I'll call it MUX2. And it still has X1, X2, S, and F. And I really want to change the color, but I can't get to it. There we go. Okay. Oh. <laughs> we'll never be able to stop this recording. Okay. Um, all right. All right. So now um, our input. 
is x1, x2, and s. Our output is f. Now, the way this is set up, you don't have to, we would not have to have intermediates on this. We could do this as one long statement, and I probably would because I'm lazy and it takes less time. But just to show you how it works, I am going to use some intermediates. Um, I am going to call um, I will call the outputs I don't remember what it, um, it doesn't matter uh, I'll call this one A and this one B and these are your intermediates they're not inputs they're not outputs and that means we call them wires so wire A B semicolon okay so now the conti continuous assigned statement uses the word assign and I'm going to assign A equal to the AND of X1 and not S so it's X1 um, and I'm terrible at drawing an ampersand and not that's the tilde S semicolon and I'm going to assign B equal to S oh, that's not even close to an and Ooh, that's not so bad S and X2 um, and then I will assign F equals to A or B semicolon and that's just the vertical line and then I can end module okay lastly we are going to do a completely behavioral specification where we're saying it's a multiplexer I know what I want a multiplexer to do. I don't care how it does it. I'm not interested in that. I just know what I want it to do. What I want a multiplexer to do is I want it to give me the value of x1 when my select is 1 and the value of x2 when my select uh, is 2. So I have a multiplexer. So um, multiplexer has your select and your zero and your one and you have your output and you want it if that's x1 and that's x2 and that's s if s is zero you want f to be x1 and if s is one you want x f to be x2 that's how a multiplexer works so now we're going to do one that says well i don't really care um how it works um and i just I just you know, want it to do what, what I want it to do. So now I'm going to have module mux3. I still have my same input, x1, x2, s, and my same output, f. Um, and I will say that... Um, I can do this in one line. Okay, so my input is x1, x2, s. My output is f. But I'm going to be using a procedural statement. So a procedural statement is something like an if or a case or a loop. It's not everything we've done up to now has just been assigning things or saying it's this and this or this or this. But now we're going to be doing a procedure. We'll be checking something. And whenever you have a procedural statement, that has to be inside an always block. And when you change the value of something inside an always block, you have to label it as reg. It's short for register. Um, and so f, that's the thing that we're assigning, we are going to be assigning that inside an always block 
because we will be using a procedural statement to do it. Because we're going to be saying, I want you to take a look at what S is and then decide from there. So I have to say reg F. Now, you could put those in one line. You can put output reg F. You don't have to have separate lines. Okay, now, um, now we're going to start our always block. And that's going to have always at. And then you have your sensitivity list. And your sensitivity list is you want the statements inside the always block to happen any time one of these variables changes. If one of these variables in my sensitivity list changes, um, then I want the steps in the always block to occur. So if x1 changes, if x2 changes, or s changes, then I want my always block to occur. Now, if an always block has more than one statement in it, if any block has more than one statement in it, it has to have a begin and an end. But all we're going to have in here is a single if. Now, it may seem like it's more than one statement because it's going to have multiple lines, but it's still just a single if. It's an if and else, which is all just one procedure. So it's all just one line. So I don't have to put a begin and end. So um, I say if, and I want to check. I want to check to see if s is equal to 0. So if s equals equals 0, so if my select is equal to 0, um, then in that case, so s is 0, I want f to be x1. f equals x1 semicolon. Else, if s is not equal to 0, f equals x2 semicolon. And that's it. And so that really is just one line. It's a single if-else statement. And then I can end module. Um, now, always blocks, the statements are evaluated in the order that they are in the code. So they go like step by step, unlike these continuous assigned statements that are just, they're all just happening all the time. So, but in an always block, they do happen in order. Um, okay. So there are also things called blocking and non-blocking variables. And um, I, I guess I'll get to those in a minute. So I'm going to stop this one and save it, and there are no questions. Okay, and then I'll go on to the next one. Yes. So just to be clear, um, the inputs in the system parameters of the always block and then the outputs are red variables. Okay, so half of that is true. Okay, so the outputs are red variables. That is true. Now the inputs what's in the always block, the sensitivity list, those are the things that you want the always block to evaluate those statements whenever one of those things changes. So it's possible, depending on your entire program, that you might not have, you might have an input that's not in that sensitivity list. Because you don't care if it changes, it doesn't affect what you're doing in that always block. So you wouldn't put no cares there? For instance, right. 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 